I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is a regular meeting of the Commissioner's Court of Hood County, Texas. Today is Tuesday, December the 22nd. I know it doesn't feel like that, but it is. 2020, it's 9 a.m. in the Central Jury Room of the Hood County Justice Center. And today we have a, a couple of illustrious ministers with us. We always have Dr. Bill Miller with us that uh, arranges to get various ministers in our county from all over. And today he has with him somebody that he's known for quite a while that's uh, a good friend of mine as well, Pastor Mike McMahon. He looks a little Tony with his peppermint striped suspenders here today. So sure, let's. The flag. <laughs> <laughs> so please, everybody, stand. Let's hear a good word from Pastor McMahon. We'll pray. Thank you. Good morning, Lord, and thank you for bringing us together to do the work you set out for us. Thank you that 2020 is almost over and we're still here in spite of what the devil has been trying to do. Help us to remember that you are in us and that makes us greater than he who is in the world. In this special prayer today, you brought to my memory a number of things from your word that are intended for us to hear. We call them personal confessions and they are truths that you speak over us for us. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want, because you supply all our needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. Jesus has been made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Jesus is Lord over our spirit, soul, and body. We are the body of Christ. We're redeemed from the curse because Jesus bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases in his own body. By his stripes, we're healed. We honor God and bring glory to him in our bodies. We have the mind of Christ and hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. We don't fear because God has given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. God is on our side. We hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. We hear our Father's voice and the voice of a stranger we will not follow. We roll our works upon the Lord and commit and trust them wholly to Him. And He causes our thoughts to become agreeable to His will and that way our plan shall be established and succeed. We are world overcomers because we're born of God. We represent the Father and Jesus well. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. And our Father God is all the while effectually at work in us both to will and to do his good pleasure. We let the word dwell in us richly, and he who began a good work in us will continue until the day of Christ. And I thank you, Father, for your promise in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all join me in pledge allegiance to this great nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You please go to the Senate. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one indivisible. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, this next deal is special presentations. And I was telling some of the commissioners up here that normally, I don't know everybody from all the other departments, but for each one of these five people here that are coming up, everybody I think knows them. They have served this Hood County so well, and they have such a wealth of knowledge and honesty and integrity and I, for one, are going to miss every last one of them, and I think the county will too. 
but um, so I guess you're going to do the honors here. The first one is James Deaver. He's only been working here since he was about four years old. So he's got 56 years or something. <laughs> so you, you got it there for him? Yes. Yeah, you, you want me to go down there? Yeah. Come on down. Okay. Well, you can wear your hat and wear mine. Lynn McDonald said the camera's right here, and uh, he said he's reflecting off the ball head because he can actually start wearing my hat. No videos, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just read this real quickly here. Recognizing James Deaver, thank you for 34 years of faithful dedication to Hood County. 34 years. That's what you get. I know you'd rather have a deer rifle, but that's <laughs> you're doing that. Nice. Look at from February the second, 1987, to December the 31st of 2020. Thank you so Thank much you for know. what you've done for Hood <laughs> County. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. Okay, the next one. Who is next to here? Cassie Shiver. Look at this. Another great person that we're going to all miss very, very much. I'll tell you what. Recognizing Kathy Jividen, thank you for 12 years of faithful dedication to Hood County. And that's for sure. Here's your clock that you can go up here so you can keep track of your retirement now. Okay. okay. <laughs> here it is from January 1, 2009 to December the 31st of 2020. There you go. Thank you. Oh, wow. You and we all get a deal. Oh, that, oh, good. Yeah. Oh. This is another guy that we're going to really miss. I mean, look at him shaking his head. And he's going to mess us. Yes, I will. I'll tell you that. Everybody, everybody knows who you are. But this is Delton Thrasher. Thank you for 6.5 years. Let's get it down to the pretty to the minute. <laughs> Here's your clock. But recognizing Delton Thrasher, thank you for six and a half years of faithful dedication to Hood County. July 9, 2014 to December the 31st of 2020. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You're a good man. Okay. <clears throat> And by the way, uh, Judge Tuggle is accompanied today here by his wife, <coughs> King Tuggle. My boss. Yeah, we hear boss, my boss too, that tried to get me to run for county judge for, what is it, 14, 15 <laughs> consecutive years yeah, or something, something like you know, that. like that. So, Tink Tuggle, we're recognizing you too, okay? <laughs> but here is your clock. Oh, thank you. But. Danny Tuggle is the guy that's been in public service for the state of Texas for a long time. He was a game warden <laughs> and a good game warden, but he's done everything. And I could tell you some stories about this good man. <laughs> but this citation says, recognizing Danny Tuggle, thank you for 12 years of faithful dedication to Hood County, January 1, 2009 through December the 31st of 2020. Thank you, Judge thank Tuggle. Thank you, sir. This is a good man right here, I'll tell you it's this. Been a, it's been a great honor to serve the people of Hood County, and I thank y'all very much. When he was a game warden, I'd be at the shooting house down there at the, uh, the target range, and I'd be out there reading the deposition and just shooting targets, and I'd be sitting, I'd see that green truck come up, and my heart would just start beating. Like, what am I, I'm not doing anything wrong. That was a sign of an ill-sent youth. Uh, that, but we solve a lot of problems. <laughs> There's another one that I hate to see. Last but not least. Leave. 
This is another good man that has honesty and integrity, and I hate to lose him because he really has been in this county. He's a good guy, and you can always count on Bruce Wright to do the right thing. So here's you a clock, and let me read this. Recognizing Bruce Wright, thank you for four years of faithful dedication to Hood County. January 1, 2017 to December the 31st of 2020. Thank you, Bruce. We're going to miss you. Good. You want to move this? <laughs> yes. You want just to get them, just the group of them? Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. The beauty of the beast on both sides right there. Can y'all move down just a little bit this direction? Yes. Aren't you up like you know each other? I don't know anybody. <laughs> That brings us, we have a service award now for Mary Flores for five years. Ms. Flores, are you here? There she is. Well, I didn't wear Good. my hat up here, and I, I don't have a <laughs> clock for you either. <laughs> <laughs> Mary has been there for all the victims of Hood County, and she has worked tirelessly to take care of everybody that needed anything. So she's been a blessing to the Sheriff's Office and to Hood County. So thank you for all your service. Thanks. Now you gotta give a 10 minute speech. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, if we got one, uh, like I said at the beginning of every commissioner's court, is that um, if anybody, any of the people out in the audience or any citizen would like to speak on any <coughs> item that's on the agenda, Sheriff Deeds has a public participation form that you can fill out, give it back to the sheriff. The sheriff will give it to Katie Lang, our county attorney. She will put you on the list and she will hand them to me and at the appropriate time in the agenda, we will call you, okay? So the next thing is the consent agenda. Does any commission wish to pull anything from the consent agenda? Hmm. Do I hear a I'll motion? I make a motion to approve the uh, consent agenda. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Cotton to approve the consent agenda. Second by Commissioner Deaver. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Okay. Uh, auditor. Oh, let's see. No, that's, okay. Bonds, no, 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 all right. Okay. Mr. Don Laney, you don't have any business for us today? Okay, good. I'll just check it. Okay. <laughs> all right, Mr. Clint Head. Morning, Judge. Morning, Commissioners. Good morning, sir. I just want to take a second, since it's the last regularly scheduled court, that, for Mr. Commissioner Deaver, Commissioner White, to thank them and wish them the best. And it's been a pleasure working with you two. Okay. All right. The first item: development has accepted an application for a replat of Pecan Plantation, Unit 15, Lot 1361. Staff recommends setting the public hearing for this replat for January 26, 2021. January the 26th of 2021. And Judge, I'll make the motion then to uh, set a public hearing for the following replat, Pecan Plantation Unit 
15 lot 1361 R uh, for January 26, 2021. It made by Commissioner Cotton to set the public hearing for January the 26th of 2021. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Eagle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries 5-0. Okay. The second item we have today is we'll have a public hearing to discuss and consider the concept plan of Liquor 116, which will be now known as Vista Oaks Development. Now we're going to convene into a public hearing to discuss and consider the concept plan at Vista Oaks Development Center. So we're now in a public hearing. Yes. What do you have for us, Mr. Head? All right. The property is located at 601 Williamson Road. The gross site area for this concept plan is 119.4 acres of the J. Belden Survey, abstract number 60. The J. Wilcoxon <coughs> Survey. Absec number 579 and the south portion of lot one, block one, J and J catfish and seafood subdivision. Recorded in slide A, 300B of the Platte Records of Hood County, Texas. The concept plan proposes to create 47 single family lots, two commercial lots. The largest proposed lot sizes will be 5.52 acres and the smallest is two acres. This concept the plan is located in the road corridor district in precinct two and will be served by well and on-site sewage facilities. The concept plan proposes to construct approximately 5,200 linear feet of public asphalt streets. There is one variance associated with this concept plan that will need to be discussed and considered prior to consideration of the concept plan. The variance is to section two, section 6.4C, concerning a street longer than 600 feet in and a cul-de-sac. The proposed Haley Court is approximately 1,850 feet from intersection to cul-de-sac, and the variance would be to allow 1,250 feet more than the 600 feet required in the regulations. The developer is proposing to build the larger cul-de-sac described in the section one of the development permit regulations. Section 6.43D requires the cul-de-sac to be a diameter of 100 feet and the right-of-way to be 120 at the cul-de-sac when there is not going to be a fire hydrant installed. Due to the configuration and the width of this property, staff has no objection to this variance. All comments for the concept plan have been addressed. If the short court chooses to grant this variance, staff recommends conditional approval of the concept plan contingent upon dot approval of the intersection to 144. Tell us what that means, Clint. It means if y'all approve it, Textile's got to approve the intersection. We don't want to do and they and they haven't done that yet. Okay, so they have. Okay. In other words, you don't want text the developer to come back and say, "Well, the commissioner's court's already approved it," and get us in a. Yeah, we'd rather not do that. Any further discussion? Okay. Well, now we're going to reconvene back into commissioner's court right now. Uh, do I hear a motion at this time? Is nobody speaking on this one? There's nobody speaking on it? Oh, excuse me. Thank you, Commissioner. Sorry, Joe LaCroix. We should do that really here and open, I think. Yeah, let me, let me go back and convene into the public hearing. See how easy it is? You can go from a public hearing to a commissioner's court. Okay, Joe, Mr. LaCroix, please. Okay. And you are going to make the cul-de-sac large enough as development requested for that long yes, cul-de-sac? On the cul-de-sac, not the larger Okay. About the fire marshal, you all right with that? Are you you're okay with that? <coughs> all right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. LaCroix. Does anybody else wish to speak? It's all we hear in a public hearing. Okay, 
Now we're going to reconvene back <coughs> in the commissioner's court. After hearing this discussion, do I hear a motion? Now, Judge, I'll, uh, I'll make the motion then uh, to approve the concept plan for Vista Oaks Development, Lucre 116 Development, uh, contingent upon approval of TxDOT for the entrance off of 144. A motion is made by Commissioner Cotton regarding the Vista Oaks development, the Lucre 1116 development as a conditional approval subject to text dot. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Commissioner White. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries <coughs> by zero. Thank you, Mr. Head. Okay, finance. Ms. Becky Kidd. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. For this court, your invoices total $1,231,532.46. $625,000 in of this are radios and fees due to Hood County Appraisal District. The rest are normal expenditures. That is a quarterly payment to the Appraisal District, which, that, again, that's just normal. We have reviewed all these invoices <coughs> and recommend payment. Why is it just so low this time? <laughs> A million. Well, you know, it is Christmas. We were giving people a break. So this, uh, Happy Christmas, right? Yes, sir. Merry Christmas. So this expenditure, 427, 416 for small equipment, that's part of what you just told us on the radios and stuff? The radios I have at 392, 557, 72. That's the first on my payments over 10,000 list. That's the radios that, that's for everyone getting the radios. It's not just one department. But that's included in this spreadsheet. Yes, sir. In yes, that four hundred twenty-seven thousand number. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything else? <coughs> Further discussion? Any comments? Questions? Well, do I hear? Judge, I make the motion to uh, pay the expenditures for December twenty-second, twenty twenty, in the amount of one million two hundred thirty-one thousand five hundred thirty-two dollars and forty-six cents. Second. Motion been made by Commissioner Cotton, second by Commissioner Deaver, to approve the payment of invoices for the period December 3rd, 2020 to December 16th of 2020. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Next. Judge Commissioners, you've all received advanced copies of the monthly reports. We have reviewed all these monthly reports. Some of them had to be amended, but everything is in order, and we ask that you accept these monthly reports. Okay. So they all, all departments have turned them in, all been approved? Yes, sir. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Yeah, Judge, I'll make a motion to approve the financial reports received <coughs> and reviewed by the Auto Department for the period of December 1st, 2020 through December 15th, 2020. Second. Been made by Commissioner White to approve the financial reports from December 1st, 2020 to December the 15th of 2020. Second by Commissioner Eagle. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, gentlemen. And Thank it has been an honor and a pleasure working with Bruce and James. Thank you, guys. Thank yes. You. Okay. All right, that brings us to miscellaneous. C1, discuss and take appropriate action regarding the purchase of the Kenwood KMC 72W remote speaker mics compatible with the portable radios purchased for the fire department. Cost is $9,792 to be paid from Fund 55 Capital Projects. We got Fire Marshal here, Jeff Young, and Sheriff Deeds. Please Judge, gentlemen. commissioners, quitters. Jokingly. Uh, first off, it's been an honor working with you guys. I really appreciate the time. Um, one thing I wanted to point out on this, I, I want to address items one and five okay. on the miscellaneous. It, it's basically all part of the same project. Um, but Sheriff Deeds here beat me to the punch on turning in that paperwork for that. Um, these, this is basically radio equipment to complete the upgrades to the radio system that we've been talking about since I started in the fire service in 2002. So back in 2002, 
we started talking about upgrades to the radios and there's been so many hurdles with the amount of money to spend to get all the radios on the fire side up to par. We went through P25s, we went through everything else. Well, this is now the 700s, it's the latest and greatest stuff to enable us to communicate. And like we've been, we've been talking on the fire side about doing this. Like I said, it, it, it's been a discussion since I started in the fire service. So I wanna especially thank this court, Ms. Kidd, Sheriff Deeds here behind me for making this happen. Uh, we're, I think we're finally gonna be up to, up to par and it was this court that made that happen, so thank you. So it's only been in the works for 18 years? It's been a minute, yes sir. Okay, well, all right. So th this item in particular, uh, number one, these are the lapel mics to go on the portable radios so that when the, the firefighters actually have their radios with them, they don't have to actually take the radio out of their pocket and risk losing it and all that. They can put it in their pocket and secure it and put the lapel mic on there so they can communicate. The, the stuff on item five, those are the last things that we need to complete the infrastructure for the repeater system out on Black Diamond. So that, that, that's gonna enable all the radios to tie in from any side and we should be able to communicate very well regardless of where we're at. Okay, so that's why we're, we've been discussing uh, C1, which I just read, and C5, we're just gonna go ahead and you, we're gonna discuss it since you and the sheriff are there and that's what you're talking about, yes, about the repeater tower that's at the Diamond A that's uh, for the all the county fire departments, all nine of them, Correct. right? Yes, sir. So it's for the northern end of the county. And you're asking for no more than $15,828.04 for that repeater. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, Sheriff. Judge and commissioners, on this one, the cost from the ones that I've already purchased from uh, the law enforcement side for Chalk Mountain and, and Diamond A, and we've set up a fire repeater at Chalk Mountain also, it, the cost has been about twenty-two, twenty-two and a half thousand dollars for everything. Well, on this, the reason it's cheaper is because the the radio man that's been doing all the installs came up with a, an antenna for this, and a, a bunch of brand new coax for it, and a, the duplexers that every repeater has to have the duplexers to make the frequency tune out right. So that's saving about seven thousand dollars on this. So bringing the cost down to fifteen thousand. 282 and four cents. So um, he's been a, a great radio guy to help first responders help us all. Um, and it's under the HGAC contract, um, just like all the rest of the stuff has been too. So <coughs> we, when I came to you prior to this, when we got the money approved for the other repeaters, we, um, I should have asked for this then, but I didn't. But I guess by waiting, it saved us about $7,000. <coughs> This, this will finish out all the uh, repeaters that you yeah. need for the county? So as of right now, we have um, a law enforcement repeater and a fire repeater on Chalk Mountain that's in service, working fine, working great. And then up on Diamond A, we have a law enforcement repeater right now that's working fine. And then this will be the fire side. And we found that it really does enhance a lot of the stuff. It'd be that some of the talk we've had, like the city of Granbury, want to move forward with a trunking system that will end up costing lots and lots of money, and that's where the future of everything is. But until we can get there, the, the firemen, the sheriff deputies, the constables, whoever, just have to turn a channel on the radio to get to the south repeater or the north repeater or back to the main repeater. But it, it really helps. We've had some serious calls in the south end of the county that made a big difference on, on the deputies being able to talk, and the same thing in the north end of the county. So I know it's going to work fine and great for the for the firemen too when they work in the fires keeping everybody safe so and and just as an update they're finishing the installs on the last of the fire trucks on the mobile radios today so most all of the radios that we've already purchased are, are either installed or in the process of being installed today they should be finished good, good. <clears throat> both of these come out of fund 55 right becky yes, purchasing i guess i mean we've done all this haven't we through yes. purchasing and agreed to it yes Yeah, we've got the uh, self-radio, pretty much they know the, the plan, they bring them down from, when they get them from in, up in Monte County is where their office is, and they bring them straight to purchasing before anything gets installed or took care of, so it's been 
they're all tagged and working good. So. Right. And this is all under a state contract, everything that we've been given through an HDAC contract. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and vote on miscellaneous item C1 first, which concerns the remote speaker mics at a cost of $9,792 to be paid from Fund 55. Do I hear a motion on that item? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to purchase the Kenwood KMC-72 watt remote speaker mics uh, for a cost of $9,792. Second. Motion been made by Commissioner Deaver to approve the purchase of the Kenwood remote speakers. Second by Commissioner Eagle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Now let's vote on item C5, discuss and take appropriate action to request from Fund 55 Capital Project for no more than $15,828.04 for a fire repeater for the Diamond A Tower for the County Fire Department and EMS to be utilized on the north end of the county. So I hear a motion. So move. Okay. Second. Who did, did you move? Yeah. Okay. Motion been made by Commissioner White to approve the uh, no more than 15828 for a fire repeater for uh, Diamond A Tower, second by Commissioner Eagle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Sheriff Deeds. Thank you, Chief. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you both. Okay. Now we're going to go back to <coughs> item C2. This is a sub project that's very near to my heart. Discuss and take appropriate action regarding the Sons of the Republic of Texas <laughs> using the gazebo and six parking places directly in front of the gazebo on March the 6th, 2020, from noon to 4 p.m. And we've got two sterling gentlemen here that are <laughs> members of the Sons of the Republic. Uh, we got Mr. Ron Sutton and Mr. Dan Vandenberg. Would you both come up here real short and just tell us the significance of this? And who the Sons of the Republic are, right quick, for everybody that may not know. Uh, Sons of the Republic of Texas. Thank you, Judge. Uh, you use the term sterling very loosely, uh, <laughs> but we appreciate it. The Sons of the Republic of Texas are the members have dis, uh, ancestors that lived in the Republic of Texas during the Republic years, 1836 to 1845. And it actually goes, for those of y'all that could squeeze in under the line, it actually goes to February 1846. Uh, but that's anyone that has ancestors in the Republic years. And what we try to do, what we do, is uh, to honor uh, Texas history, uh, the people that fought so uh, hard to establish a republic. And um, we're very proud of our chapter here in Granbury. It's the Davy Crockett, David Crockett chapter of the Sons of the Republic. Um, Dan and I will be uh, serving uh, I was an officer this year. We'll be serving together as officers uh, in 2021. And we've got some uh, distinguished new members coming in. Uh, our judge, uh, Ron Massingale, and our state representative, uh, Dr. Glenn Rogers. And uh, Dr. Uh, representative Rogers will be uh, a member of the David Crockett chapter. This event that we have on March 6th, uh, it happens to fall on the um, day the Alamo fell, but uh, we're doing it on March 6th. Uh, there's a competing uh, ceremony at the Alamo uh, on March 6th to commemorate the, the fallen heroes there, uh, but we're tying this into a, a speaker series uh, that the Bridge Street History Center is presenting that weekend on March 6th. And we really appreciate uh, y'all's consideration and letting us use that area of the uh, county courthouse square uh, those few hours. Mr. 
Vandenberg, would you like to say a few words? By the way, Dan is also, you know, everybody knows Ron Sutton here and Mr. Vandenberg. They've both been great members of Hood County in this community and uh, work real hard. And uh, we were at a, a deal last year about the Sons of the Republic, and I didn't know about it, but they said, you've been a lifelong uh, Texan, haven't you? And I said, boy, have I. <laughs> from El Campo, Texas. I've got to check it into my genealogy, and my great 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 grandfather was George Washington Massengill and fought with uh, Sam Houston and Andrew Jackson. So I'm really proud to be a member of the Sons of the Republic. And Dan Vandenberg is an author and writes some really great books. And this, Thank you, sir. this is our passion, and I'm really proud to be a member of the Sons of the Republic. So thank you very much. Would you like to say a few words, Dan? We're, we're proud to have you as a member also. Uh, this is the second year that we will have done this uh, uh, celebration of Texas independence. Um, we did it at the front of the uh, courthouse last year. It got a little noisy there and uh, had some sound problems, so we're moving it back to the gazebo area this time and taking up a few paces in the uh, parking parking spots and so forth. So uh, we had a good crowd last year. We're looking for a better crowd this year. So I uh, want to invite everybody to come out on uh, uh, March 6th, that's a Saturday, for that event. That's great. Well, but no further. Jay Riley will probably have those coordinated off, won't you? I was going to do that. Ron Sutton and I, in fact, I told Ron Sutton, I said, I know just the person <laughs> that's more than willing to help put out the cones with three of those parking spaces each side, the park places closest to the, to the gazebo that won't interfere with the, the traffic and the merchants being able to sell their goods and stuff. And it's only from noon to four, and we're gonna set up chairs that Mike Thomas and Mrs. Thomas are going to donate for us and we'll have it set out there at the gazebo on the lawn and around there. I think it's going to be very good and um, I'll be out there to assist you somewhat. Judge. You're willing to do that, aren't you, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay. Isn't that the Honorable J. Myers? That's the Honorable J. Riley from Toler that's up here, right? Call him J. Myers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Judges, I may ask, uh, add a couple of comments sure. uh, to maybe entice more of y'all to attend. Uh, and we did have a great crowd last year, as Dan said. Uh, but we're going to have some great music, fiddle music and bagpipe music. Uh, the Granbury Independent School District Choir will be participating. So uh, don't miss it. And, and Dan has written a great script that we will be presenting uh, during this celebration. And uh, I think that you'll be, uh, be proud of the way that we're honoring Texas and our ancestors. So we encourage everyone to be there. Well, I'll tell you this. That's why we Texans are so proud to be a Texan is because of this. So this keeps us alive. And I'm very proud to become a member of this. And thank you both for all the efforts y'all did in squeezing me in. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much. So I would like to move that we allow the Sons of the Republic of Texas to use the gazebo and six parking places directly in front of the gazebo on March the 6th, 2021, from noon to 4 p.m. And the Honorable Jay Riley assist in setting up the <laughs> cones and chairs out there. Second. Right. Or second. Second. Okay, motion's been made in second, uh, made by Judge Massingale, second by Commissioner Deaver to allow the Sons of the Republic to use the gazebo in the six parking places on March 6, 2021 from noon to 4 p.m. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0 unanimously. Now, here comes another big thing that's really important here, and that's item number C3. So you gentlemen stay with us here. <laughs> Discuss and take appropriate action regarding the request of the historic Granbury Merchants Association for use of the historic courthouse square for Granbury's sesquicentennial celebration on November the 12th, 2021, from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m 
on November the 13th, 2021 from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. and November the 14th, 2021 from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. So again, gentlemen, Mr. Sutton, you go first. Tell us about this celebration. This is going to be uh, a great celebration. And um, Dan happened to be in a meeting at the Bridge Street History Center. Um, and Dan, who was it that uh, mentioned it? Was it uh, Roger Enlow? Roger, yeah. Yeah, I think Roger Enlow mentioned that uh, this was going to be our sesquicentennial year, 2021. And uh, Dan didn't let the ideal hit the floor. He picked it up and started running with it. And he ran into me and he said, hey, this is something that we really need to get behind. Uh, so that started the ball rolling. And we've got a lot of committees formed. And a lot of people have already gone to work on it. And with your gentleman's cooperation and uh, encouragement and support, uh, we can make this a great celebration. And I want to turn it over to Dan. OK, Mr. Vandenberg. Well, thank you. We're really looking forward to this. This is uh, going to be a, a fun, big party. Granberry deserves a party after 2020. We're going to have a big party in 2021 late in the year. Um, we're uh, on Friday. We'll be setting up. Uh, the vendors will be coming in. We're going to we're planning to have about 60 vendors around the square. And uh, the theme of this this event is uh, uh, basically uh, uh, Cranberry 1871. We're, we're, we're celebrating the uh, uh, development of the town, the uh, uh, people in the town that uh, made Granberry what it is today. So we're going to be encouraging our visitors and our citizens to dress in period attire, if possible. If not period attire, at least Western attire. Uh, going to have a lot of fun events uh, during the day, contests for people of all ages, uh, a costume contest. We're going to encourage the gentlemen to grow facial hair. We'll be having beard and mustache contests. contests. Um, uh, stick horse races for the little guys. Uh, uh, maybe a pie eating contest. Uh, husband calling contest for you ladies. Uh, all kind of fun things like that. Uh, street dance on Saturday night. Uh, and then uh, Lots of uh, good food. Uh, we're encouraging the vendors to provide uh, uh, merchandise that was available back in the day. And uh, if they're not providing merchandise, we, we're asking people with special crafts and skills to show the public what uh, things were like back in the day and what, how people lived and what they made and how they used it, things like that. So just looking for a really big party. And uh, the... Uh, uh, Historic Granbury Merchants Association has stepped up to partner with the uh, the planning committee. So it, this is now called the Historic Granbury Merchants Association Sesquicentennial Celebration. Isn't that a mouthful? Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, it should be a fun event. And we're going to encourage uh, all the citizens to dress kind of in period, kind of clothes, a frock coat, big hat. Absolutely. Whatever. So and it, if people it should don't, be really great. If people decide not to participate that way, uh, then we're going to have a little jail on the corner. Uh, and we will have the uh, uh, sheriff's posse has stepped up and said that they will help run that jail. And people who are a, ha, have uh, violated that, that expectation will be, uh, be getting out of jail by uh, answering questions about Texas trivia. Back. Or 50, cash bond. Yeah. <laughs> cash bond, no credit go. card. Oh, there there you go. Cash bond I like gets that. you out too, <laughs> subject to the sheriff's approval. Back 50 years ago, Judge, I remember when we had our 100 year one. I, I just wonder how many people in the audience. Was you even born then, Bruce? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 50 years ago, I remember I was a little kid. We yeah. had our 100 year celebration Absolutely. and did the same thing y'all are talking about. People yeah. dressed up in, sure. in the, the age of when Granberry was uh, become of age. And uh, it was it was fun, exciting and in a, in a jail and people didn't have a beard, had to buy a brush or they would go to jail. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Commissioner Deaver, we need you on our committee with all that experience. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got some free time. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I think he'd be a good one. So. Well, this place isn't called Historic Granbury for nothing. We've got some good history in this town, and we'd like to play it up. How many people in the audience was here when we had our 100-year celebration? Is it... Anybody? <laughs> 
Am I the only one? I'm <laughs> born yet. It's too bad that J.C. Campbell is not here because I'm sure yes. that he was out there. J.C. was here for sure. For right. sure he was. So anyway. Oh. But anyway, well, I think this is going to be good. I think it's going to be good for Granbury, for all of Hood County. So I think it will be a really good thing. And hopefully by March 6th, good Lord willing, this, I hate to even use the word, but y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm not yeah. going to use it today because we don't have anything on the agenda about it. We'll subside and it will be safe and we can have a good good time. So yep. Absolutely. I'm all in favor of that. Now don't start it, Judge. <laughs> now I said I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to say the word. So slow down, Dave Eagle. All right. So since I made the other motion, do I hear a motion regarding the sesquicentennial celebration as stated in item three? Item three, I'll make that motion, Judge. A okay, motion been made by Commissioner Deaver to allow the Historic Granbury Merchants Association the use of the Historic Courthouse Square for the sesquicentennial celebration from November the 12th, 13th, 14th, from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. That's because we have a street dance at some times, and we don't think they'll really be staying that late, but we want to make sure about it. And um, anyway, we're going to all work that out together. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Bruce White. Any further discussion? Any comments? Okay, call for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Ron Sutton and Dan Vanderberg. Great presentation. Thank you, sir. We'll you, see y'all. Thank you very much. Okay, this brings us to item four. God, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> I have really been waiting for this. Item four, consider and take appropriate action on retiring Sheriff Officer Deputy Lynn McDonald's weapon pursuant or per the Texas Government Code 614.051, purchase of a firearm by our honorably retired peace officer. I had made the motion on the other officers that retired, Kathy Jividen, et cetera, and moved that we allow these people to buy their weapon for a dollar. But in Lynn McDonald's <laughs> case, I am asking that we have a fair price of 50 cents. Because if he's carried it all this time, it isn't worth anything. He's used it for a hammer and everything else. So I move that we allow the illustrious <laughs> Lynn McDonald to purchase his firearm for 50 cents. I'll second that. Okay. Most have been made in order. second for 50 cents. <laughs> Anybody got change for the sheriff? <laughs> okay. Well, it's not worth the dollar. But we're getting a bargain here. <laughs> but I don't know if we can do this because it says honorably, and he's honorary. Uh, honorary. <laughs> I thought it was a misspelled. That's what I thought myself. it said, Roger. Honorary. I thought but, somebody misspelled it. Yeah. If you're good with it, then we'll let it ride. I guess. Yeah. So I paid the extra fifty cents. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hold it. That's okay. You got, it's a donation to the Jack bank. Wilson wants to buy it for 50, let you pay your 50 cents. So I think that's good. Thank you, Jack. We'll accept that. Yeah, that, that's go. So that's all it's worth. So all in favor of allowing the honorary Lynn McDonald to buy his service weapon for 50 cents, say aye. 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 All opposed. <laughs> Finally, one thing that everybody agreed on. You never hear that too much, Steve, Mr. McDonald. No, not when I get up here in court. <laughs> <laughs> 50 I, cents. I was, a while ago when y'all had all the other ones, I was thinking, you know, really, I guess I'm too, might be too young to retire for the ones you did have up there. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> Thank you for right. always offending somebody <laughs> when you say something here. I appreciate that, you know. Free us like Lynn, who needs more. That's right. <laughs> no. Congratulations, okay. Lynn. Congratulations. We're going to miss you, Tahoe, Lynn. Yeah. Look <laughs> <laughs> okay. like you right. said that, because I was thinking it. <laughs> okay. All right, this brings us to item C6, discuss and take appropriate action to request from Fund 55 
capital projects the sum of $11,237.50 to install an automatic gate for the employee parking going into the impound yard at the law enforcement center. Sheriff Deeds. Judge Commissioners, um, yeah, the lowest quote was that $11,000, but what we really need to make sure it holds up is the a gate similar to what we're getting on both ends of the driveway. So through commissary, we've spent, or actually, we haven't wrote the check yet because it isn't all totally up and running, $62,000 out of commissary. We can do that for security and to benefit the inmates. So we've got the big heavy sliding gates that roll back and forth on both ends of the driveway. And the 17,393.31 will get us a gate just like that. The other number that was put into the 11,237, 50 that was in the agenda, that's some swinging gate, so not as heavy duty. Um, so I'd rather have something that'll hold up longer, um, be there for many years to come, would be that 17,393.31 uh, to get us exactly what we've got on the other gates. And the company that we got the proposals from, we had a hard time. This has been a, in the works for a year, basically. The only company that ever gave us a quote was this anchor group, and we had some others that said they were coming through with quotes, and they never did. But the commissary has paid about 62000 and this is in addition to that to complete that. We've had a lot of issues over the years. 25 years that, that building's been up there, we've had a lot of people coming in the back. I've got to protect the, the county equipment and people's personal property that's back there in the impound yard. Um, and here in the last year, it's been an uphill battle trying to keep people out of there. People up to no good and people that just don't like to, don't know how to read signs and all that. So we got to fix that and get those gates up there. So with this, this will secure everything. So you're, you're, um, when me and you talk, I said the sliding gate is way better than the arms. Yes. And what you're wanting us to approve is the $17,000 one. That sliding gate, yes. I, I'm all for that because that's a better gate and to hold up a lot better. Will hold up a lot better. Yes. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, since I spoke up, I'll, uh, I'd like to make a motion to go ahead and go with the sliding gate at the cost of $17,393.31. Your second. Second. A motion been made by Commissioner Deaver to allow the purchase of the sliding gate at a cost of seventeen thousand plus dollars. Second by Commissioner White. Out of fund fifty five, Judge. Out of fund paid for out of fund fifty five, yes. <coughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries five zero. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank, Thank you. It's a good worthwhile project. Something <coughs> that needed to come in a long time. Okay, item number seven, discuss and take appropriate action to allow the county judge to sign Microsoft licensing agreement. It, you don't look like Drew. I do Hello, not. Owen, how a are you doing? A little bit heavier, I'm doing well, how are you, Judge? <laughs> okay. All right, tell us what we got here. So this is just our regular agreement. This provides um, our operating system licensing, our server licensing, our email licensing, basically everything we have that's got Microsoft on it, it's all you know part of this here. So normally they run three years. Um, the first year always has to be signed by you. Years two and three, we can just sign ourselves. So we've just finished our last three-year term. So we're back up here trying to start on year one again. So nothing's really changed. Uh, price has gone up a little bit, but it's mainly to deal with uh, additional email licenses since we've gotten a couple more employees since three years ago. But otherwise, it's all just kind of standard procedure for everything Microsoft-related. So you're recommending? Yes, sir. Okay. What is the cost of it? Today? Uh, it is just shy of $76,200 a year. Okay. But it runs everything in the county. Yeah, right? it's pretty. It's the backbone of the county. So without it, we'd have no operating system, no computers, no servers, nothing. So. Well, I think this is a that, kind of a no-brainer then. Yeah. That comes out, come of out of your budget? budget? Yes, yes, it does come out of our budget. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, all right, do I hear a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the Microsoft licensing agreement. Second. Second. Okay. Motion made by Commissioner Deaver. 
to allow the county judge to sign the Microsoft licensing agreement signed by Commissioner, second by Commissioner White. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Owen. Okay, item number eight, discuss and take appropriate action to set a rental amount for the Hood County Indigent Care Clinic to utilize an office space at the Acton Annex. You want to talk about that a little bit, Commissioner White, because that you're most familiar with with that, how much space it is, and I'll talk about it too, but I mean, how much space is it at the? It's about those uh, 1,600 square feet. No, you're not right. no. 1150 what there is there's a suite down beside the constable's office uh, uh, out there on in act in the act and annex and uh, uh, it's been asked to be able to use to be a hood county indigent care care clinic and uh, uh, it's just and nobody's using that space nobody's, right? nobody's using it. it's an empty building right now um, uh, nobody's using it uh, we just need to figure out if this is what we want to do with it or, you know, it's just an option that we've been kicking around. Okay. Well, all of the, for, for just the county's edification, all four commissioners and myself are on the Hood County Hospital District Board of Directors. And um, this is a project that we've been doing and kind of the, the amount that we've been talking about was what, $100 a month. a month on the deal. And this would be with um, the care clinic actually putting in and putting about $7,500 into improvements into this portion of it. So um, the fact that it's not being used at all, and second, that it gives an option for the indigent care clinic that we're all responsible for. I'm really in favor of, uh, of leasing that space as described by Commissioner White to the Hood County Indigent Care Clinic at the rate of $100 per month. Judge, uh, let me... Uh this might not be the spot to bring it up, but I'm going to anyway. Uh, with that motion, uh, what do you think about we ought to make it this subject to because the hospital district hasn't approved the indigent care going to the annex as of yet. It's on the docket, but it's not been approved. So we, we could go ahead and, and approve this subject to the hospital district approving moving the indigent care from the clinic out to Acton. Would that make sense? That does make sense, and I modified my motion to include your modification subject to the Hood County Hospital District making the move to the annex. I'll second that motion. Okay. So then that motion's been made in second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay, this brings us to item number nine, discuss and take appropriate action to approve a property tax abatement for approximately 529.5 acres of land in Southeast Hood County for the West Camp Ranch Solar Project, Shea Hopkins. Yes, ma'am. Right. Good, Good morning. morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. I am excited that this is out in the open now after a lot of work has gone on kind of in the background for over the last six months. Um, so what we're basically going over and proposing today is what we had previously discussed um, in two executive sessions that we have. Um, and I have copies, if y'all didn't bring them with you, of what we've proposed previously. Do, does anyone need any of these today? Do you need one? Okay. Uh, I, think I have mine. Yes, I have mine. Yeah. Probably get the big one. This, if your if your eyesight's good, you can leave yeah. the shrink one. But. All right. 
So, do you want me to just go over the abatements or do we want to go ahead and do a brief overview of the project as well? Well, how about just a brief overview yeah. because we've all discussed it and seen it yes. and talked about it. Yeah, for public transparency, yeah, like yeah, but you're, sure. Yeah, okay. But for let what we're doing, for what we're doing here. Very okay. good. Okay, so, so about six months ago, um, a solar company reached out to us, um, and they are doing a sizable solar project that would span three counties. It would span Hood County, Somerville, um, as well as a small portion of Johnson County. Um, the lion's share of the project is actually in Hood County, um, a little over 500 acres, um, and they're looking at a capital investment of right around 69 million in just our um, county alone. So that is the portion that we would be discussing today. Um, we know that Somerville is still kind of trying to figure out what their abatement situation is. They have also already approved the reinvestment zone as we did previously. Um, and then Glen Rose ISD has also participated in the abatement thus far. So the reason for this abatement is solar is a very small margined um, profit at this point. So they have to be very specific on what they're able to do. And so basically these projects don't happen without the federal funding that they'll be receiving and without our abatement participation. So that's why we want to be involved in those. Um, why I showed you the original abatement proposed as well as um, the recommended abatement is to show that we have worked with this company and we've come down from what they previously had wanted and we kind of met in the middle for a place that we both felt good about where we will be receiving more than we're giving. Um, another thing that I think it's important for everyone to know is the land that they are looking at really isn't usable for any other purpose. So we're not taking away land that could be used for something else um, and abating it. We are taking land that really isn't usable and getting tax dollars out of that land. So the proposed abatement that I highlighted on mine there are two reasons that I chose this one over some of the other options. It's the shortest. So we will be done with this abatement in six years instead of 10. Um, it is front end loaded, which is what most companies look for because the initial investment is obviously greatest in the beginning when they're having to set up all their equipment and bring people in. And so they usually prefer that you front end load it versus sparse it out equally over a longer period of time. So um, as you all know, we've kind of gone over this several times, but what we would be potentially abating if they, the 69 million is, is met is we would be abating about 819 um, thousand dollars, but in return we would be receiving two million three hundred and thirty nine thousand tax dollars. So this is basically money that we will not receive if this agreement can't be reached because it wouldn't be feasible for the company to place um, their solar project here um, financially. So. And there's really no cost to the county. There isn't. They have asked for zero infrastructure, zero roads. Um, they have even mentioned that they'll probably try to do some other projects that could potentially help with, um, they've talked about bees, they've talked about other things that would be good for our ecosystem. So they're very cognizant of that. Um, the judge and the commissioners and I all sat down and talked with the company, and I think that there is a pretty good sense of who they are and what they're they're going to bring. Um, and again, it it really isn't asking a lot from us besides this abatement for them to place here. So, yeah, one little thing that I wanted to make sure I'm clear on: you said something mm -hmm. about federal money, yes. but I. <laughs> I was under the understanding that that was going to be in the form of tax, a tax credit it is. type of situation, not not funds coming in, correct? Right, and, and we don't have anything to do with that, so it's not something we have to apply for or we have to keep tabs on, so that's completely outside of our purview. So the only thing that we have to worry about um, with them is this agreement today. Any other questions? I think you did a good job in bringing them in. They, they only going to use like after they do the construction, it will only provide jobs for like three or four people. Correct. But that's not the big deal here. It's the fact that Hood County is going to get money that we would never receive if this project 
is not done. And I think our agrarian on the commission, Mr. Deaver here, went out and like he agrees with you that the land is just very marginal. You can't use it for farming or ranching or anything else. Pretty rough. Pretty rough. Land, so. And that's actually one of the parameters that we were able to put the reinvestment zone in place is it has to be um, marginalized land um, to be able to create the reinvestment zone in the first place. So. Do you know what it's appraised at right now per acre? I do not. It's not 60 mountain nine million. No. <laughs> Just for a location, if anybody knows where it's at, it's down around Fort Spunky. <laughs> if you know where that's at. Don Lenny knows where that's at. <laughs> Don Lillian, oh, is that an up-and-coming residential place where they want to? <laughs> You're being facetious, aren't you, Don? <laughs> yes. Okay. Pretty rough country out there. All right. It's out in the boondocks. Sports funky. Okay. Where do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion then to uh, approve the abatement uh, per the economic development's recommendation that we've received here. It's uh, basically. Uh, giving an abatement to this company over their life of the abatement, is it 819000 Yes. And uh, be tax dollars based on evaluation mm -hmm. and our tax rate, a uh, revenue to the county of 2 million, what, three? That's hard to read. 2,339,000. 2,339,000. <laughs> yes. So that's my motion. Okay. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Motion been made by Commissioner um, Cotton to approve the property tax abatement as discussed. Second by Commissioner Deaver. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. You did a great job. Thank you on thank bringing you. this project to us and thank you very much. And Commissioner White and Commissioner Deaver, y'all will be missed. So thank you all for your service. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, this brings us to item C10, approve request of purchasing to issue letter of non-renewal for RFP 2018 to 007 to Granbury Tire Center, also known as Granbury Tire, and approve request of purchasing to issue RFB 2020-007 as a replacement request for bids. Ms. Nelda Walters. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Um, you should have received a copy of the letter in your packet that I propose to send should you decide you want us to end this contract. Um, because it is a renewal, there are no days required. Um, it's always by mutual consent, and that's what the letter states, that this is their notification. So I'd like permission to send it. Firing them? Pretty much. Okay. Any other discussion? Any questions or comments? Uh, Judge, if not, I'll make the motion to uh, approve the request of purchasing to issue a non renewal for the RFP 2018 007 to Granbury Tire Center. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. Second, made by Commissioner Eagle. All those in favor? Acknowledge if I say an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Okay, item number 11 discuss and take appropriate action on contract RFB 2019 001 oil and transmission related services. Renewal is due by March 31st, 2021, and RFB 2016-003, tire-related services. Contract again ends on March 31st, 2021. Ms. Walters again. These are both contracts we currently have, and they will continue until March 31st unless action is taken by this court. Um, one is going to be rebid. I mean, it's time. It's its time limit is up as of March 31st. Um, should you choose just to let it ride, it would just not be renewed at that time. Well, it'd be rebid at that time. The other one is a renewal, 
and we would just cease to renew that contract. However, if you choose for me to cancel the contract, it, re it requires 60 days notice and that letter would need to go to them and then um, at the end of 60 days we could have it bid back out. Was there Both anything in your packet on this? Uh, I seen the letter. Did you give us something in writing on these. On these, I did not because I wasn't sure what y'all wanted to do. Whether you wanted to. I, I talked to you about that. What no to do? I came and at least talked to me about it. Is it, we've got three contracts. We've got the fleet contract with Goodyear. She's got two other contracts with another company for doing the oil changes and also tire repair. It's, yeah, it's it's oil and transmission services. Yeah. And tire related services. Tire related. So what? What we talked about, I, I asked Nell to put that on the court. If we're going to rebid the fleet contract, you know, the the margins in a profit are in the oil changes. I mean, that's where they make money. I, it didn't seem fair to me that you give the fleet to one company and then we're doing the oil changes and, and the other stuff to another company. We, could we bundle those to bid that? Well, all they're, all, they're all Granberry Tire. They're all with Granberry Tire? Yes, they're okay. all with Granberry Tire. Oh, I thought that was a separate... No. Just a separate contract with Granberry Tire. Correct. Well, if we if we go out and rebid the fleet contract, we would want to bid that with the oil and the other tire service, I would think. Well, I could understand that, and I have no problem with that. The only problem will be the interim between when these end, the 60-day notice non-renewals. I have the bid ready to go out for the fleet maintenance to advertise tomorrow. I don't... <laughs> well, it, makes, it just makes me wonder whether or not somebody's going to bid on the fleet if they don't get the oil change and the other, other two contracts. They might not well, be the, interested in doing the fleet. Uh, this is the first time that Granbury Tire has ever done the oil transmission. And I've got uh, we've actually gotten some additional. We're sending this out to six different vendors as of right now that I actually mail it out to. Anybody that sees the advertisement, whether it's on our website or through the paper, can contact us to get the bid documents. So it's open to whoever wants it, you know, whoever wants to apply. I can delay, if you wish, the fleet services maintenance, but I really, it's a really important one and it's a high dollar one. So that's why I was trying to. Well, I don't, so right now, if any constable or sheriff's deputy needed to get a tire service or their oil changed or whatever they needed to be, they could just go to Goodyear and they would get it done because they had the contract, correct? That is correct. Okay, so if we get the non-renewal then, how are we going to, you mentioned something about, and you and I talked about this in my office very briefly, what are we going to do for this short interim period here? The short interim pre period, I am going to take your suggestion of just having... You're going to have to speak up a little bit. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Sorry. Is that mic on? Yes. Yes, okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to take your suggestion that we have them call instead of put in any kind of RFE to let us know that without having a contract for fleet services, they would have to notify us with an RFE. Normally, when we're in a contract, they don't do that. They can, they're can they allowed to take it directly to the vendor because we already know what the vendor's prices are supposed to be. So in the interim, they can call us. We are going to ask them a question like, what unit number are you in? Who is this? You know, that kind of thing. And try and find out what's wrong with the car so we can match that up when the invoice actually arrives. But it will require a phone call from someone and it can, it can be whoever they deem appropriate as far as the department. You know, it can be an admin, it can be the actual sergeant or deputy or whoever is driving the vehicles or the constables themselves. They're going to be they're going to be calling you. They're going to be calling the purchasing department. That's an interim until we get a That contract. is in the interim because once you have an actual contract, you can go back to how it was. They don't have to put in any paperwork to do that. They can just take it. Well, I'm going to let you speak on that, Lynn. So be thinking about 
what your reply is going to be. But when Ms. Walters came to see me and we discussed this concept, my whole deal was is I didn't want a sheriff's deputy or a constable that's driving one of these cars subject to this to have to fill out an RFE to go to some place and maybe get to that place and then they tell you that there's going to be a four hour wait or a six hour wait and that car be out of service and what are you doing during that period of time. So this way by the constable or deputy calling in and letting purchasing know that they are going to get a bill for oil change or tire servicing on a certain unit, it's not going to come out of nowhere but they may go to several places. In fact, I've had deputies and constables say that they could have gotten oil changes a lot cheaper than what we were paying Goodyear. So I, I think that's what we're going to have to do. They're just going to call you up and say, I'm in unit 24 and I need an oil change. I'm going to go try to get that done without specifying where they're going to actually go. And they may have to go to one or two places to see when they can get it done and then after they get it done I assume that they just call you in or are you going to have them have to do an RFE at that particular time? No. Uh, you, are you talking about after the contract's done? No. During, During the interim, interim period. No, no. They don't have to submit an RFE. Purchasing is going to write that up ourselves is okay. what we're going to do. That's Just during the interim. Just, yeah, during the interim, we're going to have them call. We're going to ask, like I said, the unit number, who this is, what's the problem, and we're going to write it up, and because of the unit number is how we're going to try to match it up when the invoice comes in. So they're not going to have to do any of that. It's just a phone call. Mr. McDonald, I know you dealt a lot of this with the fleet. Do you have anything to add to this? Come on up here. We're going to squeeze the last bit of experience and knowledge out of you that we can. The only thing I see with that. Come on up to the mic so it's being recorded, okay? Yeah. <laughs> when you get to doing that, we're somebody is going to have to have a vendor. All of our vendors have got their own number. We're all and paid employees have got a vendor number. So there's probably going to be a lot of the oil change places that we do not have a vendor number or the mechanic shops do not have a vendor number. Which is not a big deal, but it is one of the things that we have to deal with when we do do an RFE and a PO and everything for it. Now that, you know, as far as the price, now it's going to be hard to beat Goodyear's oil change price because we use synthetic fuel or synthetic oil in all of our patrol vehicles. Now, yes, you can get a cheaper price, but not synthetic price. When you have a high mileage, and all most of our vehicles are high mileage, except the five or six that we get brand new every year, you're going to run into issues with that vehicle and that motor. So, you know, you got to stop and think, and it's not when somebody goes to wherever, we've only used two oil change places in the county in the last 20 something years. And all of them have been sold to different people. So we're going to, somebody's going to have to get some uh, vendor numbers. Other than that, that's, you know. Sounds like your recommendation is to go to Goodyear and get it anyway. So. Well, it, it's going to be until the time that a new quote or new contract yeah. is done. Yeah. If Granbury would, Chevrolet or the Chevrolet place bids on it, bids on the whole thing, we'd take, take them there for oil changes. Is that correct? correct. I, I've been here, I've been through about five or six different places, and they're all about the same when you get down to it. They're, they're going to miss things. Uh, all of our vehicles are done on the computer. They hook the computer up and it tells them what's wrong and sometimes the computer is going to lie to you and you're going to have to take it back and get it worked on. But yeah, every few years we need to go out for a new contract for different companies that come into this county because we got so many of them are coming in 
new companies, mechanics, and things. So that's, that's not a bad idea at all. What about for that interim period of time what Ms. Walters just described about the officer that needs an oil change or tire service just calling in and saying, I'm going to take this unit, all vehicles have a number, I'm assuming. Correct. To, you don't know during this interim period what you're going to do, but they know that that unit is, they're going to be expecting a bill from somebody for an oil change or whatever, and they're going to be able to connect it up to a, an officer and a, a, a vehicle. Do you have any suggestions regarding this? It needs to go, like for the sheriff's office, it needs to go through one or two people. Because when we get to doing the RFEs, well, if they're going to do the RFEs, that's fine. But when we get it back, we get that invoice back from having it done, somebody in our office needs to be collecting it and making sure that that bill is paid. Now, unless y'all want to get all the invoices too, and we'll have a deputy that goes out and gets the oil changed, and then as soon as he gets done, he's got a hot call, and guess what? That invoice never gets back to us, then it comes back to us through auditing. We have to start looking for that invoice, and you know, my office goes down, you know, what invoices are it, is it, and we try to c connect all the dots up for auditing. Well, can't Therefore, the officer just tell them initially, just, just send this bill directly to purchasing? Mm. If they did that, don't it, send it back to the sheriff's office during this interim period and let it go, because purchasing is aware that they're going to get a bill on that certain vehicle number, and they're going to pay it, and they're going to be expecting the bill. And that, or, that or I can send them a copy of the RFP that we write up. Send it to Kim? I would say Kim or Chief Smith okay. will be. I can send them that document. Okay. So they can okay, that's right. it up. Here's the deal. We've got to streamline this stuff. I've had so many complaints about people about these RFEs and getting stuff done. I want to do it efficiently and as cheaply as possible. It needs to be streamlined, and that's what we're trying to do, and fair to the county, the cost. So, okay. I guess that's what we'll have to do during the interim period of time then. Yes, Ms. Kidd. Why don't you come up here so we can get it down on the record, Ms. Kidd? We gotta come on down. <laughs> Judge Commissioners, the the reason that pull it you, down in front of you there, Becky, because okay. The reason that you would get an invoice, if at all possible, is that officer signs for the work done. You see what I mean? You can if they send us five invoices with no signature. It could be work on the same car twice, work on two cars, we don't know. So it's important if we can get an officer's signature on the invoice, if at all possible. That's why they probably don't mail them to us now, because we would like to see the officer's signature. It's a good auditing function. That's just my yeah. two cents. Uh, that that, that that's probably doesn't happen that often where they're at an oil change or stuff. I know you may have to get back to total real quick or something there. <laughs> Glenn, but most of the time, they're going to stick around. They're going to get their car just to sign their name right quick, don't you imagine? It rarely happens that we don't get an invoice that's signed, rarely. Correct. And then if my office is handling it, we do make sure we sign it. And a lot okay. of times we'll sign on our name, we'll sign what vehicle that we're signing for. Okay. So I just wanted to, to stress the importance of why we do it, yeah. why we have the process that we do now. Yeah. I always, whenever I sign something, I try to sign it and date it. So, like yes, you said, you're not going to be getting the same work on the same vehicle twice or three times and then only working on it once. So, yeah. I don't, I'm like Reagan. Trust, but verify. So. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you, Ms. Kidd. Okay, I think we understand this. Does anybody care to make a motion? Thank you. You're this is item number 11, discuss break broken action on the transmission and tire related, oil and transmission and tire related services. So we're not going to renew that on March 
So what are you looking for us to do? To not uh, renew it? Just, put just it give me bed? direction, you know, as of right now. What Cancel you want it. me to do, if you want me to let it ride until the end of March, then it's already in the process as okay, far as... When you go out to bid for the uh, fleet, you'll do it all at one time with one company? I can't do it for all the fleet that way because the fleet needs to go out right now. Yep. I can't wait on it. Okay. So but these can't come up and, and until the end of March, or if you cancel, it'll be at the end of 60 days. Let's do it. Judge, and, we and do it at the end of 60 a, days. End of 60 yeah. days? End of 60 days from today. Well, it'll be from when I mail it. I have to mail a return mail receipt and all that, yeah. Okay. Well, I think we're aware of it. I think we should just wait until the... Well, at that we, time, we could uh, we could make the motion to send out the cancellation on the RFP 2019-001. Is that right? Is that the one I'm talking about? Mm. Item number eleven. Really, yes. That's item number eleven. Yes. To cancel that, give the 60-day notice to cancel it, and then until you get a contract, they will we'll use the interim, as we've discussed, uh, with the RFPs. At the end of that 60 days, yes, after we're, no, right. we're done with that for that 30-day okay. period right. or whatever it until is, you, then... Do you get the contract? Yeah. Okay. Do I hear a second to this, and Ms. Lang, I'm assuming that you've got a recording down there where you're going to be able to figure out what the actual motion is on the part. It's actually two parts that we're going to agree to wait, number one. And then during an interim period, I think all we need to do is cancel in 60 days, and the other thing will take care of itself. They're going to have to go just what Nelda said to do, and March. you'll work with the sheriff's department and departments to do that. Yes, sir. So we're, my motion is to cancel this contract, give them 60 days notice. Okay. I hear a second. I'll second that. Okay. Motion be made by Commissioner Cotton to cancel um, the. 60-day contract and to and been seconded by Commissioner Deaver. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay, item number C-12. Consider and take appropriate action pursuant to the Code of Criminal Procedure Act Article 18.17 in reference to the Bravis River Authority confiscation of abandoned items to declare as scrap per the list attach and allow the BRA to dispose of these items per the recommendation of the commissioner's court. Ms. Walters bought me pictures of all these confiscated watercraft. They usually damage kayaks, damage boats, and Lynn's back there laughing because I got to looking at this junk and I says, what do we normally get for one of these boats? And Ms. Walters replied, well, the last time they sold one, the Sheriff's Department got $4.10. And I said, I don't think it's even worth a deputy spending 15 minutes looking at all of it. So I think it's all scrap. And to allow um, the BRA or whatever to dispose of it how they see fit. So we got a first, she said, to scare that it is scrap. And then my suggestion was let the BRA talk to some Boy Scout troops or something. A couple of the kayaks in there, maybe a John boat, look like it could be repaired. Don't want any liability, though, on it. That's why I want the BRA doing it. But if they can use that boat to give the Boy Scouts a project to use, then maybe they can use them to do something. But the county is not going to make any money on this project. So... Do I hear a motion then? Just, you would like to add anything to that, Ms. Walters? Um, just if anybody really wants to see the pictures, I do have them. Uh, I know you've shown them to me. Yeah, Bruce, Bruce came by my office yeah, yesterday so, and looked at them. They're, you know, they're I guess the bad. motion would be just to allow the Brazos River Authority to dispose of items as however they see fit. Second. Right. Okay. okay. Works for me. Motion has been made by Commissioner White to abandon these items to the BRA and yeah. let them do with them what they wish and second by Commissioner Eagle. All those in favor, uh, say aye. Aye. 
All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. That brings us then to item number 13, approve request of purchasing to accept pricing quotation on bulk fuel for the period of one year beginning January 1, 2021 to December 31st, 2021 to Steen Oil. Again, Ms. Walters. Uh, good. Um, we send out a letter every year to do this quote. Sorry, Becky lowered it. Uh, we send out a quote every year in December to do the bulk fuel uh, for our volunteer fire departments, things like that. Um, and Honstein is actually this last year been acquired by Synergy uh, Petroleum. I had forgotten that, and when I looked in the file, I saw that the name had changed. So, um, and Parker is still, the representative is still using Honstein Oil, so it's Honstein Oil slash Synergy. Uh, we do this on margins because the, the cost of fuel fluctuates so much. Um, and Hanstein's uh, margin is 21 cents and the Hampel uh, proposal is 30 cents. So it's my recommendation that we keep our business uh, with Hanstein Synergy. Okay. I'll make that motion, Judge. I'll second. Motion made by Commissioner White. To, no. I mean, to Commissioner Cotton, I'm sorry, to accept the pricing quotation of bulk fuel uh, from Honstein Oil, second by Commissioner Eagle. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. This brings us to the last item. Approved request of purchasing to award vendors bid quotation on purchasing agreement PA 2021-001 for the term of one year from January 1, 2021 to December 31st, 2021 for vehicle equipment rigging. Explain that, Ms. Walters. Okay, we do this again every year so that when we get new vehicles for the SO, uh, we can actually have the old equipment taken off if it's deemed still fit to be used and to um, reinstall it on a new um, vehicle. Sorry, I'm looking for papers. Uh, you both, all of you have the quotes. Um, the price difference is quite evident if you look at them uh, between that. We got a quote from uh, Emergency Apparatus who's had our business for several years. The other one is from Defender Supply. I think we should keep it with um, Kevin Jones with Emergency Apparatus because of the price difference and also the fact that Defender Supply is actually in Argyle. They're not local but they were the only two that responded to our request for a year's quote. So my suggestion is to emergency apparatus. Okay. Dr. Granick, did you wish to speak on this topic? Sort of, not so much on this topic. But You're just about ready to just really uh, surprise this old county judge here if you know anything by vehicular rigging on the deal. I mean, I respect your opinion on a lot of different topics. I don't know if I'm prepared to accept it on vehicular rigging, not to prejudice you in any way. If I can have a few moments after you all vote on Okay. All right. Are you finished, Ms. Walters? I am. Okay. The floor is yours, Dr. Granick. I just, since this is the end of 2020, which we would like to probably be a year that we would all forget, but it will be the last commissioner's court. And I want to thank on behalf of all the citizens, especially commissioners White and Devers, since they'll be retiring, but also uh, commissioners Cotton, Eagle, and Judge Massengill for the forbearance of listening to citizens like me keeping, on behalf of all the citizens, keeping the county functioning both productively and safely. Y'all get buffeted on all sides. Y'all can't ever win. 
but I want to thank you all. I appreciate that it's a really hard job. I didn't know this five years ago when I hardly knew what a commissioner's court was. But thank you, and I want to welcome the two new commissioners. So thank you for listening. Being I, I to retract listen to those me. negative remarks I made about your knowledge of vehicular rigging based <laughs> yes. upon that eloquent speech. <laughs> then. Okay? Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Dr. Granite. Okay. All right. Now. Um, now, go ahead. can I make the motion, Judge, to yes. approve the purchasing to award the vendor's bid quotation to emergency apparatus? Okay, do I hear a second? Second. Motion been made by Commissioner Cotton to approve the request of purchasing on the uh, purchasing agreement we would get regarding vehicular equipment, Reagan, second by Commissioner White. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Say Gee, I was going to let. Devers make that one to make his last motion of, the, of his career, but yep, sorry, y'all ripped me off. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Hey, He's made plenty of motions and done a good job. Hey, Judge, I'd like to say one thing before everybody sure. leaves. Uh, I'd like to thank this court up here for uh, being able to be a part of it. Uh, you know, uh, James, I've, I've been around here a long, a long time, me and him, we've known each other, and he bleeds Hood County. Uh, Ron Cotton, he came in, you know, hit the ground running. Dave Eagle has made me learn more, research more, <laughs> caused me to have some uh, sleepless nights with this research. <laughs> I thank Dave for that. Uh, the, uh, the value, the, the uh, education that you gave me uh, in the last two years, I'll take it with me. Uh, Judge Matzenkill, this man's put a lot on his shoulders. It's been a tough year for everybody, but I've I thank everybody for the opportunity that the voters gave me. And I think in the future, Kevin and uh, Jack have got some pretty good challenges ahead, but I know y'all will, will hit them head on. And uh, I just want to say thank you. I just want to say one other thing, too. I'll tell you what, on all these difficult decisions that we have had and done, everybody on this court here has really agonized over and prayed over every decision that we made. And they're just some topics that are just toxic. And you just going to, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, you're just going to offend someone or some group. And I guess that just the way it is, and uh, but I want to tell everybody that the integrity and the honest and the dedication and the hard work of James Deaver and Bruce White for what they've given to this community is really irreplaceable, and they took it very seriously every step of the way, and I will say that, and I mean that from the heart, and also. Ron Cotton and Dave Eagle have always done what they considered to be in the best interest of Hood County, always. And it was difficult decisions, and it, it's a lot better when, like everything here today on the docket, passed 5-0. We all thought a lot on everything, and that's nice, but there are just going to be some issues that you're going to have a difference of opinion and have some conflict. I just hope that we can do it all civilly. You can disagree, but I would hope that we can disagree civilly. And I think that this court has, and I'm looking forward also to working with Jack Wilson and Kevin Andrews. I know both of them, and I think that they will come in with the same dedication and the open-mindedness and to do the best thing for every citizen of Hood County. So thank all of y'all. I hope all of y'all and all the citizens of Hood County have a very joyful, happy, great Christmas with your families. Please be safe, be careful, 
and we will see you back next year. So thank you all, all very much. Judge, I just want to thank Bruce and James both for serving with me and looking forward to Jack and Kevin to we'll keep this thing going. So that's short and sweet. They will do a good job. Thanks, thanks to Bruce. Thank you for what you said. And you've taught me a lot yourself. I appreciate that. And I'm glad I'm far enough from James that he can't hit me. So I appreciate that too. But thank you. <laughs> thank you, James. Good working with you. Enjoy it, Dave. All right. And with that, this meeting is adjourned.